if you watch my last video about kawaii, you might have questions like does it have a greater reach beyond Japan? So I'm going to answer the question as we explore through the impact of kawaii culture as a global transcultural phenomenon, its social and cultural implications outside Japan. First of all, let's take a look at how the kawaii aesthetics travel all the way from Japan to Europe. Yes, Europe known for its rich culture, history and arts that are hugely different from Japan. In Europe, we are going to focus on two specific countries, Italy and France, two countries in Europe that are globally known for their rich artistic history. Renaissance art, French Impressionist, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, Michelangelo, and so on. Countries with such a strong artistic history, is it really possible that they get influenced by a small island nation almost 9,000 km away? In fact, the Japanese kawaii aesthetics have had a major impact on French and Italian comics production and commodified cultural goods. In the late 1970s and in the 1980s, especially in Italy, Spain, and France, the first great arrival of Japanese animated TV series occurred in Europe, accompanied by a wide range of related publications. Illustrated books, original and bootleg manga pocket albums, toys and gadgets, and goods of all sorts. It was the so-called first anime boom in Europe. The influence of hundreds of Japanese anime series on television, new anime-inspired toys in the households, illustrated books with anime characters, and soon afterwards manga in kids' magazines created a new sensibility and taste for more than one generation of children. These kids would later become teenagers and young adults and would buy in the 1990s and 2000s. Tons of translated manga during the second step of this expansion, when not only European publishers and TV networks asked for manga and anime as in the previous pace, but now also Japanese companies began to strongly promote the exportation. Another term used by a German scholar Jacqueline Bernd is a manga-esque a composite category that not only indicates a set of styles and attitudes related to manga as literary and graphic text but also, and above all, a set of production and distribution attitudes of cultural products that have an impact on the consumers' and prosumers' cultures. Today many items, products, social and community practices could be defined manga-esque, and this converges with the notion of trans-acculturation an array of Japanese literary and entertainment forms and products that have in recent years become the center around which communities of youth but also former youth assemble. During the first flow of anime and manga into Europe, most of them were of the cool type. They involved some level of violence and action, for example, giant robots, science fiction, adventure at large. However, in Italy and France mainly, in the 1980s, strong concern among others, educators, politicians about the alienness of Japanese cartoons led many television stations to reduce or stop the broadcasting of anime with adventurous or allegedly violent content. This led to a shift in the content of manga and anime broadcasts in Europe during the late 1980s, 1990s, and the following decade. Anime and manga of genres where protagonists were young females, majoko, teenage witches, romance and transpositions from European American novels for girls, started to be preferred in Europe for national broadcasting as they were safer. This change has been labeled as a transition from cool to kawaii by the researcher Marco Pelliteri and describes the shift from adventures based on a certain degree of action and addressed to an audience of kids without distinction of gender a series devoted to an audience of girls only. This transition was not only aesthetic and related to genres, but also involved music. The anime songs associated to these series for girls had very different atmospheres and melodies, started to be sung by female artists only, and contributed to a stereotypical genderification of the perception of televised anime as a whole. The result of this was a feminization of the reputation of Japanese anime in Italy and France. The result of these dynamics can be seen in Italy and France. A majority of anime for girls was observed to be airing on television. The release in theaters of Japanese animation films almost exclusively by the Ghibli studio and the absence in the cinemas of virtually any anime films related to science fiction or adventure.
the rise of a completely new audience for comics, a female readership focusing on a suddenly enormous supply of manga for girls and young women. So after the anime boom in Italy and France, its after effects are still seen today in the Italian and French society. Let's take a look at some of them. Since the 1970s, Italian and French children have taken up the Japanese kawaii aesthetics in their drawings. Moreover, in the 1990s and 2000s, some of those former children would become either amateur or professional comics creators and their drawing style would be, consciously or not, influenced by manga and anime. Settings, division of the pages and panels, and their dimensions and shapes, visual codes, body and face morphology of the heroes. Even the ways narratives were composed, or the character psychologies and so forth. Figures of robots, flying machines, chisel mechanical men with horns appear in children's graphic productions at the same time as and after the television broadcasting and the production of space-themed comics and cartoons. The most evident traits of kawaii-sa in the observed drawings can be found in the shapes of the faces and in the size ratio about 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 between the head and the body of the human and animal figures. In the particularly big dimensions of the eyes and small size of the nose, in the choice of the subjects to draw since the 1980s from Yoichi Kotabe's design for our personal shoujo Heidi, animated series directed by Aizawa Takata in 1974, to Sanrio's Hello Kitty and similar characters, to the more recent Pokemon and others, and in the color choices systematically inclined towards white as well as light pastel and subtle tonalities of pink, green, yellow, and blue. In the marketing context, Glocalization means the creation of products or services for the global market by adapting them to local cultures. The term global management, in a sense of think globally, act locally, is used in the business strategies of companies, in particular by Japanese companies that are expanding overseas. Similarly, the kawaii culture from Japan has been localized to an extent in European countries such as France and Italy. A popular activity observed in events such as Japan Expo in Paris and Luca Comics and Games in Luca since the mid-1990s was that fanzines, homoerotic themed manga created by women and intended for a niche female audience and amateur artists at comics conventions took little writing desks here and there and exhibit, sell or give for free their manga-like comics. The influence of kawaii culture has also created different types of Euro manga in the world of professional visual art production and publications. Spaghetti manga is comics made by Italians and the discourse is easily extended to France where manga-like plot lines were melded with a character cast and visual cliches based on manga-esque design. It also included even a series of big publishers such as Bonelli, Disney Italia, and Dargu Soleil. In France, among the most interesting creators of comics active in the field of Euro manga are comics makers whose works have appeared in the manga-esque magazines of Les Humanoids Associates. Skydoll, created by artists Alessandro Barbucci and Barbara Canepa, this science fiction and fantasy series displays a graphic style that overtly merges Disney-like design, Japanese manga features, and a mix of cool kawaii. Which, Wings Club and Skydoll are the major emblems of how in Europe, during the 2000s, processes of aesthetics and commercial hybridization in the sector of characters for the very young have been carried out. The narrative and psychological model of these Euro manga are the same as in the Japanese Sailor Moon series. By surveying the fashion products addressed to little girls and teenage girls in the 1980s and 1990s, we find Italian brands such as Naoliari, the famous Italian textile clothing company, or Pucci, a Mattel property of the 1980s, a cute white and pink female dog, far too overtly based in its visual features and for purely commercial purposes. The long-term effect of kawaii objects and motifs is visible in fashion brands created recently in Europe, such as the world-famous Tokidoki by Italian designer Simone Legno whose products can be seen as a fusion of kawaii elements directly taken from the 1980s, 90s. The Gothic Lolita fashion, which has gained popularity in Italy, France, and Germany, 
and also among practitioners from other emerging markets for manga and anime such as Russia, Hungary, Poland has lost the status of a well-defined all-female subculture whose meanings go beyond the fashionability of the clothes and accessories. An interesting observation has come to light in the recent times, which is a transgenerational transmission of kawaii culture from young mothers to their daughters in Europe. It has been recorded that in these latest years, women in their 30s or early 40s who in their childhood and teenage were fond of Japanese animation and manga, and who today, having formed a family, have become mothers of daughters 8 to 10 years old, tend to dress their daughters and provide them with accessories that directly come from their own childhood and use imagery of the late 1970s, 1980s, and early 1990s. Characters such as Doraemon, Candy Candy, Creamy Mommy, Sailor Moon, and the whole plethora of female kawaii or kawaii-like heroines of Japanese anime famous in the 1970s, 80s, 90s are a significant part of the visual legacy of these mothers to their little daughters. This process has been identified as pertaining to parents who define themselves Italian otaku. Like the video and subscribe for more videos.